everyone and welcome back to English with Kaylee. In today's video, we're going to analyze another one of Ted Hughes's poems, this one entitled The Jaguar. So as always, we'll read through the poem, we'll do a brief summary and we'll discuss the themes before we do our stanza by stanza analysis. Um, and finally, I'll leave you with an essay question that we can discuss in the comments below. So let's get started. The Jaguar by Ted Hughes. The apes yawn and adore their fleas in the sun. The parrots shriek as if they were on fire or strut like cheap tarts to attract the stroller with the nut. Fatigued with indolence, tiger and lion lie still as the sun. The boa constrictor's coil is a fossil. Cage after cage seems empty or stinks of sleepers from the breathing straw. It might be painted on a nursery wall. But who runs like the rest past these arrives at a cage where the crowd stands, stares mesmerized, as a child at a dream, at a dream, at a jaguar hurrying, enraged through prison darkness after the drills of his eyes on a short, fierce fuse. Not in boredom, the eyes satisfied to be blind in fire, by the bangs of blood in the brain deaf the ear. He spins from the bars, but there's no cage to him, more than to the visionary, his cell. His stride is wildernesses of freedom. The world rolls under the long thrust of his heel. Over the cage floor, the horizons come. Okay, so let's take a look at a summary of the poem. Um, so first of all, it opens with the zoo animals. Uh, we see the apes, we see a snake and the tigers and the lions, for example. They're all seen looking very bored um, and, and still. As the speaker moves, they find what it, what looks like empty cages, basically due to the inactivity of the animals. Um, and they comment on the smell that's coming from each cage. So the suspense builds as the speaker describes the audience looking at the jaguar who furiously spins around in his cage. And we get the sense that the jaguar isn't bored and doesn't feel his physical confinement can trap or tame him. In his mind, he is free and the world still spins under his feet. So for, like the majority of Hughes's poems, we have to see the jaguar as, as a metaphor as well, not just the, the literal animal that's in the cage. So some of the themes we'll discuss is captivity versus freedom um, and the power of the mind and imagination. And again, that extends to, to, the, to humans as well. So our stanza by stanza analysis. So the, the poem opens with the apes yawn and adore their fleas in the sun. So this very powerful imagery from the offset. Um, you know, we see these wild animals, but then we get it's sharply contrasted with that, that boredom and inactivity that we see and that they that they face in captivity. And this is reflected in those drawn out sounds of the yawn, adore, um, and, and, is, and ends with that end stop line in the sun. So the end stop there, just emphasizing that this is all that they do. There is nothing else to stimulate or um, motivate them to want or need to do anything. The apes yawn, the parrot shriek. So we've got this anaphora here, just emphasizing the monotony of the day. Um, and that, that there really is nothing else that, that they engage with or that they do. The parrots shriek as if they were on fire or they strut like cheap tarts to attract the stroller with the nut. So we have two similes here that really reflect the unhappiness of the caged birds. So the first ones are these kind of cries of entrapment. They shriek as if they were on fire. Um, to be on fire is, you know, it does give this idea of being entrapped. Um, and of course, that's the metaphor for being trapped in captivity as well. 
And then we've also got this idea of them strutting like, you know, promiscuous women um, hoping to get some some food from from the passers by, and and we'll go back to to this idea of of women in the poem, um, especially when we consider that the jaguar is male, um, and some kind of deeper layered analysis that we'll consider at the end. The key thing though is that like the apes and the tigers and the lions, they're not doing what they are made to do, so they're not flying. Fatigued with indolence, so just tired of being bored here, um, tiger and lion. And this very much juxtaposes their life in the wild. They are the fearsome killers, top of the food chain. Um, so it juxtaposes with their, their inactivity that, that they're experiencing and that they're showing. So Hughes could be suggesting here and talking about how captivity suffers and drains the animals of their true nature. And in the jaguar and how he juxtaposes that, perhaps Hughes is encouraging this kind of resistance to, to conformity and confinement. Again, we'll consider that in terms of how that expands and extends to humans as well. So fatigued with indolence, tiger and lion. So we have on Jean into stanza two. It creates a sense of anticipation for the reader because we expect for something to happen from the tiger and the lion. Um, but of course, it doesn't happen. They simply lie still as the sun. And the simile here emphasizes their stillness because it seems as if it's the world and the zoo that moves around them. You know, the sun only seems to appear to move because the earth is rotating. So we get that same sense that they are not moving. It just seems that everything around them is, is continuing. Many end stop lines used throughout the stanzas. Um, so we've got more here, these, um, these full stops, sorry, not end stop lines, but the full stops here, the sun and is, is a fossil. This full stop creates a very sudden stop and halt um, in that they're not moving. The boa constrictor's coil is a fossil. Um, so a very much, a, a very sudden, sharp halt and stop to, to the sentence to really allow the reader to reflect on the, the effects of captivity. Is a fossil. I think what's quite interesting here is that we've moved from similes in stanza one um, and even at the start of stanza two, lie still as the sun, and now we move to a metaphor. And this really highlights that there's no return for these animals now. This is what they have been reduced to. When you're like something, there's always a possibility that you may change, but when you are something, it seems a lot more unlikely that you're going to be able to find or change. Um, that moves on here to the cage after cage. So we've got this diacope here, which is just repetition in close succession. Cage after cage seems empty. Again, we get this very harsh reality of these, you know, numerous cages right next to each other, um, the amount of animals that are that are caged and trapped there. And we get this imagery of a, of a lifeless prison and um, that the animals are subject to. Stinks of sleepers from the breathing straw, a very intense sibilance here suggesting the disgust of the speaker in the fact that they can see this and smell it, but it also emphasises that stench that's being emitted from the cages. And the stanza finishes, it might be painted on a nursery wall. Uh, this sentence is written in perfect iambic pentameter, um, and it's very interesting that it, it goes to show this very dull and tame zoo could almost be used as a picture in a nursery, and a nursery in in Britain would mean either a preschool, but it can also be a child's playroom at home. So it, it just goes to show how that that wildness and that um, animalistic behaviour and, and ex display is removed from the animals, so much so that it could be on a nursery wall. It's very much unthreatening, it's tamed, it's a boring version of nature due to the loss of wildness of the animals. So stanza three, the suspense and the anticipation, it builds for the reader because we're still awaiting the title animal. Um, 
And this is where we start to see a shift here. We've got this very powerful contrasting conjunction, but who runs like the rest past these arrive at a cage where the crowds stand, stares mesmerized. Um, so here we further, Hughes further builds the arrival um, as he decides to describe the spectators first and how they are almost captivated themselves in a dream. So we've got this simile here of this awe and wonder. And finally, we're introduced to the jaguar, at a jaguar hurrying, enraged through prison darkness after the drills of his eyes. Straight away, we want to be looking, commenting on the juxtaposition with the animals in stanza one and stanza two. He is still, he being the jaguar, is still ferocious, so his wildness is intact. And we see his eyes are drills and we get the sense that they can break through the bars of this prison, um, of this physical space he's within, and also perhaps into the souls of the spectators who stand and watch him, forcing us to consider our stance on captivity and keeping animals locked up. Through prison darkness, after the drills of his eyes on a short, fierce fuse, uh, so we keep that on enjambment. The short fuse here, um, we consider this kind of angry outburst. We use this to talk about people. If you say someone has a short fuse, it means that they they can get very aggressive very quickly. So the jaguar could almost explode into violence at any moment. Um, and this is obviously mimicked by the sibilance and the alliteration of F, the short fierce fuse. Interestingly, again, juxtaposing the other animals, not in boredom. So this act and this display is not driven by boredom, but its primal instinct as a wild cat. The eye is satisfied to be blind in fire by the bang of blood in the brain, deaf the ear. Um, I think this is one of my favourite lines in, in the poem we get this sense of the intensity of the blood pumping to the brain. It's almost deafening for the jaguar. And that's emphasized by these very sharp, plosive B sounds, the bang, the blood, the brain, re-emphasizes his very ferocious, wild nature. And the stanza finishes with, he spins from the bars, but there's no cage to him. So again, that very stark contrast with the other animals. Um, and it also talks about that physical space, the cage. It does not impact the freedom of his mind um, and, and the wildness that it possesses. So again, using it as that metaphorical meaning for the physical space, but the mental space as well. So stanza five, we have more enjambment. Um, so the stanzas, uh, stanza four and stanza five, the enjambment used reflects that the jaguar's freedom and his movement around the cage. More than to the visionary, his cell. It's quite a lot to say on this one. Um, so this, this is an analogy, um, comparing the jaguar's freedom to a visionary. So a visionary is obviously somebody who sees beyond the limits of their world, um, which is, of course, we see that very explicitly for the jaguar here. Um, but we also have this, if we consider the word cell and the connotations, so this could obviously mean a prisoner, which is more linked, more closely linked to, to the jaguar itself. Or it can also reference a member of a religious community as well. Um, and if we consider that, we look at how an imprisoned visionary can still find freedom within their own mind, so in their imagination, um, and how that is that's created for them. And the poem then ends with three metaphors, um, which show that the jaguar is unchanged and it highlights the freedom and the power that he retains. The first one being his stride is wildernesses of freedom. So even each step that it takes is freedom itself. Um, and that the final section, the world rolls under the long thrust of his heel over the cage floor, the horizons come. This very much suggests power over the world, uh, 
even as the world tries to tame the jaguar through captivity. And this one definitely re reminds me of hawk roosting um, in terms of being that, the, the predator to the prey um, and having that kind of that power over the world. So as I said, we very much have to see the jaguar as a symbol, like with many of Hughes's poems. Um, and it is that idea that no physical boundary can contain the human mind. And through imagination, we can actually bring the world to us. So before I give you the essay question and we consider the form, the meter and the rhyme, I do think that this poem has a lot of deeper meanings and we just need to, to touch upon it briefly. So we're going to analyze the, the jaguar as the symbol and consider it layered analysis. So obviously the jaguar is this symbol of this primal instinctive energies and the imagination that humans possess. And this idea of thinking outside the box. So the jaguar does this very physically from the cage in thinking about life outside. He's able to drill through the cage. Um, and as humans, we tend to conform and think of things very much inside the box. And maybe Hughes is commenting on resisting that um, and changing the way that, that we think. This might suggest that the feeling of confinement in society and its norms and expectations. Um, and finally, I, I did say that we'd go back to this idea of the jaguar being male and the cheap tarts mentioned in stanza one being female. And if we couple this with the recurring mention of children and the nursery, it could also be a metaphor for the confinements of domestic life and how it can suck very specifically for a man, it, it can suck him of his power and virility, uh, that kind of, you know, uh, power um, that, that they claim and that they have. So you could also mention that in your layered analysis, just to push it further and show that kind of personal response. So in terms of form, meter and rhyme, so we've got five quatrains uh, which mimic the physical confinement of the cages. The speakers move from stanza to stanza like the strollers passing from one empty cage to the next. The meter, it doesn't have a strict meter. However, I did say earlier on, sometimes it slips into iambic pentameter. So line eight is written in perfect iambic pentameter. And that quite rigid structure there captures that boredom and the repetitive nature of life at the zoo for many of the animals. And for rhyme, we do have a rhyme scheme, this A, B, B, A, except the third and the last stanza. Um, so we call these enclosed couplets. Um, so it's a form of this poetic imprisonment, which links back uh, to, the, to the content of the poem and the theme of captivity. And the stanzas that deviate are the ones that show the Jaguar's movement and thus emphasize once again, his imagined freedom. Okay, so the essay question I'll leave you with is how does Hughes strikingly convey the Jaguar in the poem? So be sure to leave some comments down below um, and we can discuss them ahead of any exams that you may have. And please don't forget to like and subscribe for more Ted Hughes analysis videos. And I'll catch you in the next one. Bye guys.